Good day, Africa, and welcome to another exciting edition of AU Talks on AETV. My name is Chrissy Sam, and as you already know, we are still continuing our mainstreaming of the pedagogical leadership um, training um, organized by the Partnership for African Social and Governance Research, PASGA, based in Kenya. And we are live from the University of Ibadan, and where we spent one week talking about how university teachers or lecturers must be able to transform teaching and learning processes in African universities. And we are privileged to have the Director of Higher Education, Pasga, and she's the person of Dr. Beatrice Muganda. And she's going to give us the overview of the training and then the way forward as well. And the key lessons that we have been able to learn out of the one week training here in the University of Ibadan. So you are welcome to AU Talks, Dr. Muganda. Thank you once more. Great. Pleasure. All right. Yes. yes. So um, last, I think we met six months ago. Yes, we where did. Where we were talking about pedagogical leadership in Africa. Yes. And then we look at the inception stages of how possible um, this project could take off beautifully. Yes. So I think we should take it from there, from December where we met what has been the, the action plan, the learning outcomes to, to May 2019. Oh, wonderful, yes. Um, before I proceed, let me begin by um, acknowledging the partnership in its fullness. Mm -hmm. So I am Beatrice Muganda, Director of Higher Education at the Partnership for African Social and Governance Research, mm -hmm. based in Nairobi. Um, but PASGA is the lead partner in a consortium mm -hmm. of um, eight institutions. Okay. The rest are the Institute of Development Studies, University of Sussex of the UK. Mm -hmm. We also have Africa Research Universities Alliance, mm -hmm. Arua, and then we have five implementing partner universities led by the University okay. of Ibadan in Nigeria. We also have the University of Ghana in Ghana. We have Dar es Salaam University in um, Tanzania. We also have Egerton University in Kenya. Mm. And finally, Uganda Matters University okay. in Uganda. All right. Yes, and we are funded by the Strategic Partnerships for Higher Education, Austria. Innovation, mm. yeah, and Reform. And uh, SPHERE is a grant scheme supported by the Department for International Development. That's a long one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. Yes, 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 mm. yes. So we are here courtesy of, you know, the partnership okay. and our funders. All right. So you made mention of um, partner university. You yes. You mentioned about five key universities. Yes. What does it take for a university to be a partner? Or they were partners right from the inception stages of the project? So, um... The initial partners were there at the conception stage and mm. we discussed these ideas with them okay. and put together the proposal for PEDAL. Right. However, PEDAL is for all African universities. Mm. So any university that's interested in working with us to transform the teaching and learning practices in programs mm -hmm. at the institution can send us um, a request, a letter, an expression of interest, and we work through the proposal and see how we go there and help them roll out PEDAL. Okay, all right, so let's go deeply into PEDAL. Yes. I know you have been an academic, and still yes. an academic, you've lectured in um, the university setting for some time. Yes. But why do you think we need pedagogical leadership in such a time like this in Africa? Oh, we sure need uh, to transform our teaching and learning practices. Mm. There has been hue and cry that our, our graduates are not really coping at the workplace. Mm -hmm. And part of this is because our um, curricula are very much knowledge focused mm -hmm. as opposed to skills. Skill -based, so okay. through PEDAL, we are trying to inculcate not only the knowledge, but also the skills mm -hmm. and the right attitudes for work. And um, so then we work with teachers to transform their practices in classrooms okay. to create job-ready graduates, but mm -hmm. also graduates who are ready to create opportunities for, for others, themselves, okay. for themselves and for others, mm. and to be fully functioning members of the society, politically, socially, leading on all fronts, mm. and you know, just uh, <coughs> leading the way for socioeconomic transformation. Okay, yeah. so doc, you made mention of a, a key point where some schools of thought have different ideologies about the reasons why we have huge numbers of our graduates being unemployed. Others say that it's because industries are not expanding. That is why some of them, and we have huge uh, numbers graduating every year, but not necessarily uh, the absence of skill to work in industries. 
So there are many factors, of course, and um, we cannot excuse our economies. Mm. Yeah, there's, there are structural features that mm. also you know, contribute to this. But we are saying that there are many stakeholders, okay. and each stakeholder has a role to play. To play. The mm. government has a role to play in terms of just spearheading economic development mm. and availing opportunities in the economy. That's right. The you know, um, industry has a role to play mm. by, by, you know, putting up establishments and also taking up the students even on internship, mm -hmm. even helping in the curriculum, you know, design mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that the, the content that we teach in the classroom also speaks to their needs. Mm -hmm. But institutions also have a role to play. Yes, so by focusing attention on the institutions, I am not exonerating other stakeholders. stakeholders okay. Parents too have a role to play right. to learn the whole to you know contribute to the holistic development of their children mm. so my message is that let all the stakeholders play their yeah, role okay. so now we're talking about universities what can the universities do and how can pedal help them mm -hmm. to deliver the right kind of graduates okay yes. all right so let's focus on pedal yes. and then <laughs> look at the the, the content yes because if you want to transform teaching and learning the university i believe that there are a whole lot of factors that come to play yes and so what goes into the content of pedal i know there are several models can you walk us through the models probably maybe some universities may find one or two lacking areas and would want to so what's interesting about pedal is that it has evolved from actually what is offered in the universities mm. in education so their course subjects that are offered in education that help teaching staff to teach mm. especially in the bachelor of education program okay. so we looked at these learning domains and teased out what would be immediately applicable mm. in a classroom and then we looked at what's the practices and what's obtaining in other universities abroad in the u.s because in designing pedal we worked with the University of Minnesota in the Kestergy approaches. Okay. Mm. We worked with the Open University and mm. we worked with the IDS University of Sussex. Okay. But we also worked with our participating universities. So there are things that we teased out of the education program. Mm. And so um, it was very interesting in this program that we've just finished at the University of Ibadan. One of the professors from uh, Abafemi Aolo University said, when he looked at the program, he wondered, this looks like any other education program. Mm -hmm. But when he sat in, he realized it was a difference. Because as you know, knowledge um, has its core domain, mm -hmm. but evolves. And of course, then we capture the emerging content mm -hmm. to enrich the content. So PEDAL is drawn from the education um, knowledge domains. So we have educational foundations. Okay. We go right back to the philosophy mm. and we ask teaching staff to reflect on their own beliefs mm. uh, about you know, teaching and learning. Are they pragmatists? Are they realists? Mm -hmm. And how does this impact on their teaching and learning practices? Mm -hmm. So for example, those who just dictate notes have a certain belief and those who um, involve students in the teaching and learning pr process more actively are more pragmatic. Mm. So that we draw from education foundations. Then there's the theories of learning. Okay. And this then exposes teaching staff to think about the, the learning needs of students mm. and how this can be made so, okay. based on the early thinking about how students learn. Mm. So we have those that believe that um, you know, from the classical theories, mm -hmm. it has to be through repetition mm. and through regurgitation of facts. But then we have also those that believe that, you know, students may not know much, so you have to bank, bank sure. the ideas in them, and then, you know, they'll reproduce it on an exam. Mm. But we are trying to move towards a more constructivist approach to say these are adults, they are bringing their learning experience mm -hmm. on the table. Can we help by facilitating more knowledge, helping okay. them to expand what they know, helping them to make the right connections, what is in theory and what is out there and how they too can connect. So help students to make more meaning. So this is all drawn from the theories of so learning. So more or less you are moving from the teacher-centered approach to a learner-focused approach. Uh, yes, and so from education foundations, mm. Teachers are able to question their own beliefs. Okay. Do they Have they even taken time to understand the way students learn? Mm. And if they do, how are they responding to this? We have, you know, the multiple intelligences yes. theory and, you know, how different students have um, 
are better endowed in certain abilities mm -hmm. than others. So when you use different methods of teaching, when you use uh, multimedia, mm -hmm. you know, students respond in a different way. Wait. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's good to just mix these approaches so that you meet the different needs of students. Okay. And so this is from the education foundations. Mm -hmm. We also stretch them to, you know, just look at what's happening in society and link it to what's happening in the classroom. Okay. And so make the education more relevant, more uh, responsive to societal needs. That is education foundation alone. alone. Mm. Then we move to transformative curriculum and learning design. Okay. So again, we are, we are not changing the curricula of universities, but we are enhancing its quality. For some universities, they just have a course description. So if you have a course description and some objectives, any teacher can stretch that learning in any direction. Mm -hmm. So we walk them through the process of developing or refining learning outcomes, mm -hmm. looking at the strategies that help students towards moving, attaining those uh, learning outcomes, okay. and always keeping an eye on knowledge, mm. keeping an eye on skills, and especially transferable skills that are needed for the 21st century, century. Mm. and the values. Mm. And, and attitudes. And then um, we, we walk them through learning design. Okay. How do you design a learning experience so that students come out of it with the highest level of satisfaction, and saying this was exceptional. Mm -hmm. I feel more confident. I can do this on my own. Mm -hmm. That concept was hard. But after this uh, lesson, I can understand it. Mm. I can use it. I can you know apply it. So, so that's all in curriculum. Mm. So beyond that, we then um, go to the pedagogical strategies. So through the theories of learning, they have learned that st students or learners learn in a particular way. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, if they use, for example, um, experiential uh, learning approaches like the case studies, mm. like the role plays, where they get students to experience something, then they develop skills better then they are better able to um, retain mm. what they have learned. So when we go to these pedagogical strategies, we start demonstrating practically what simulations are. Mm -hmm. And we've done things like go on a boat, you know, and learn how decisions that are made to save um, specific individuals when a boat is sinking. We've gone on a plane and also just you know enacted the same mm -hmm. we've done voting and uh, enacted out the kenya election outcome okay. of 2022 we, we we also you know did some betting and uh, you know kind of simulated who's going to win the premier league in the okay. uk so very interesting things that make them really immerse themselves in the process and then see what is the difference between, let's say, a simulation and a role play. Mm -hmm. What are the benefits? And then think through, how can I apply this in my own classroom? Okay. Moving out of that, those are the pedagogical strategies and models. We go to the fourth one, which mm. is innovative assessment. Okay. And we are working with teaching staff not only to assess knowledge through, let's say, continuous assessment tests, mm -hmm. which is sometimes just cuts. Sure. Yeah or um, you know long papers long essays mm -hmm. and the paper uh, pencil test and yes exactly and the final exam but to look at the learning outcomes that are emerging from every learning experience mm. if it is a presentation how are you helping students to become more confident mm. you know it is assessment for learning not of learning Assessment of learning is they didn't learn much, they mm -hmm. have failed. <laughs> they learned much, they mm -hmm. have passed. Mm -hmm. But assessment for learning is identifying gaps in the learning process, process in yeah. terms of attaining the learning outcomes mm. and continuously helping the students to increase, to advance to towards the expected learning outcomes. Okay. So, so Doc, um, one key thing, I believe it is a homegrown solution. A yes. homegrown solution means that it is African-based. Yes, yes, yes. So in terms of your facilitators, who are they? Are they drawn from African universities or they are drawn from your partner universities outside the continent? Um, before I answer that, I'll just quickly go through the, the last two modules. Okay, go So this pedagogical leadership mm. and mm. in a nutshell, okay. once we've trained our teaching staff, we empower them also to share this within 
their departments mm -hmm. within their university and other colleagues outside of the university. Okay. And then technology enhanced learning is mm -hmm. a big thing. Okay. And teaching staff are very excited about it. We have testimonials like, I have never used technology before, mm -hmm. but after seven days of training in Pedal, I created a website. Okay. So this is amazing. Okay. Okay, so about the resource persons. Yeah, so no, before you go to the resource, yes. let's go for a short break, and when we return, we'll look at the resource persons, okay. and then also the other. Viewers, you are still watching the pedagogical leadership um, training, and we are privileged to have Dr. Beatrice Murugandi, who is the um, Director for Higher Education of PASGA. So keep watching. One of the universities set up in our pre-independence era the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Our international reputation has and continues to soar as a reference point in matters of science and technology, research and education. We believe that the future belongs to those who have sound technology acumen. I love USD. I love KNUSD. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. If you just tuned in, you are still watching AU Talks, and today we are privileged to have Dr. Beatrice Murugandi, one, Muruganda once again. And we are going through what um, went on at the University of Ibadan during the pedagogical leadership training in Africa, and she's given us a very good overview and what to even expect next. Doc, so before we went on a break, we were, t we were about looking at the, the facilitators and also find out whether these are homegrown solutions. So you can take it from there. Thank you. So when we designed PEDAL, as I indicated earlier, we had a pool of international resource persons okay. working with our own, you know, teaching staff. Mm. So we have gone through a process of apprenticeship where through every training we spot talent mm. and we include them in the resource pool. pool okay. And, uh, you know, they go through a process of co-teaching, mm. observation, then they join the team. Well. Mm. So our vision is that in every university, we will have at least 10 teaching staff who are adequately prepared mm. to train others okay. in the university. And this will be, you know, a sustainable solution to uh, enhancing mm. teaching and learning practices at the university level without necessarily really drawing resource persons from across the across continent. The continent. Okay. But for now, we appreciate this approach, this cross-fertilization of ideas, mm -hmm. yes, and also just sharing experiences from the different, different. contexts. Okay. Yes, so we are proud that, you know, we have an international solution mm. that is locally relevant mm. and driven by our own teaching staff. By Africans. Yes. That's great. And that, that is one of the key points that I really want us to put across. Yes. But moving from there, let's even go straight into the achievement. Um, I know this is not the first training. Um, it started somewhere. Can you just take us through where the first pedal training took place? What were the lessons? And then the second one also, or the, the current one that we are having at the University of Ibadan. Yes, I'll just quickly go through that. That We had a pilot in Nairobi in okay. July mm. last year, and we trained about 41 teaching staff. Okay. Then we had the central training in Nairobi in August, and we trained about 149 teaching staff. Mm. Then um, January 2019 this year, we trained 23 teaching staff from the University of Nairobi. Okay. And then the big one was in March of mm. this year. We went to Uganda and Tebe and brought together seven universities and trained 110 teaching staff. Oh. So there are major breakthroughs with this Uganda training as mm. well because we brought together small universities, big Bigger universities, mm. universities that are drawn to different faith, who had never really had some serious engagement before. Oh, we okay. broke these barriers, mm. dissolved these stereotypes, and they came together to talk about pedagogical mm -hmm. practices and to learn together, to share expertise, to share materials, and join an active community of practice that is mm. moving decisively mm. to 
lead the transformation agenda in Uganda. Great. So that was 110. We have also worked with um, a number of teaching staff to develop case study material that mm. can be drawn on for teaching not only pedal but the different subjects. So, okay. And then Ibadan was the biggest. Mm. So in Ibadan, we have successfully trained 250 teaching staff. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. And so we did this in six parallel sessions, okay. and that meant bringing on board about 60 resource persons. That's huge. Yes, it was, it mm. was, yes. Okay. So the, the lessons from the one you did in Kenya, in Uganda, and then in Ibadan, do you see some correlations, uh, especially the problems that you identified or the, the key issues that you identified? Do you see some resemblance in all of them? Or every country has a specific or a different um, issue or challenge that you identified? So the challenges are more or less the same. Mm -hmm. We have the issue of technology. Mm -hmm. And I must highly commend teaching staff of the University of Ibadan for okay. that. Because we, we tried to go around this issue and we knew that it was the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. But they came with their own modems and uh, used their own data but you know we were able to subsidize them along the okay. way so this was really heavy commitment on their part mm. so we've had you know issues of technology but as you know pedal does not just advocate technology enhanced learning alone okay. we are very much aware of the issues in our context the mm. african context mm -hmm. so pedal focuses on unleashing the potential of teaching staff to innovate mm. through role plays through group discussions storytelling mm -hmm and other forms of problem-based learning. So we are achieving a lot, despite the challenges with technology. Mm -hmm. And then um, we have uh, moved to be even more practice-oriented. Okay. And um, so the simulations, for example, every time we think of an interesting idea that we are going to simulate, so they are evolving. Mm -hmm. um, same learning points, but different sims stimulation mm. yes and uh, we have crossed into the um, um, undergraduate programs okay so initially pedal was for graduate social science programs all right but you know you come as a teacher you're empowered you teach postgraduate programs you teach undergraduate, undergraduate programs yes. so teachers are coming with very interesting stories and saying you know what i gave them material to read there were 200. Mm. I, you know, divided them into 20 groups of 10 each, mm -hmm. and then I told them, okay, you read the material, enact a role play, you know, and I choose the presenters randomly, mm -hmm. and I ask the others to critique. Sure. And then, you know, they get the feedback and say, now write a report mm. based on the lessons that you have learned from the critique mm. of the role play. Initially, we did not anticipate that. With Ibajan. Pedal has crossed decisively into the sciences. I see. And this, again, was not anticipated. Mm -hmm. We thought we were going to move that road slowly. But the trans transition, especially with curriculum design, mm. is seamless. So smooth, okay. It's seamless. Mm. So in fact, our first experience was um, in April this month. We just came to the University of Ibadan and mm -hmm. trained managers okay. on curriculum redesign. Okay. And most of the programs in Ibadan mm -hmm. are uh, science-based. Okay. And they really benefited from this. Great. So in this particular program, we now offer the, the whole of the pedal training, the six modules. Mm. And you cannot believe that we have some doctors. I mean, every participant is important, but I'm just illustrating. We have doctors who have their consultancy clinic, mm -hmm. but they were with us for a full seven days, attending pedal, asking questions, offering examples of simulations that mm. can be used within their context. That's great. Just allow me to give an example from architecture. Mm -hmm. So we have this professor of architecture who says, you know, I can see how I can use a role play. I'm going to get all the actors involved, <laughs> the engineers, mm -hmm. you know, the architect, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, even the, the designers, suppliers everybody, or? yes. To on the on the site to discuss the project, mm. you know. So it's it's amazing how we are just breaking barriers into the dif different disciplinary areas. Mm. And I must tell you, we are overwhelmed by the growth of pedal okay. in numbers, 
in spread. And in quality as well? Yes. Great. All right. So right after University of Ibadan, um, what is the next um, training session? Oh, um, we, we will convene in Mombasa okay. in June so that all the teaching staff we trained last year can share their stories mm. of pedagogical transformation, the journey, mm -hmm. the opportunities, how they were used, any challenges, how this was addressed. I think this will really be good in terms of just maintaining the momentum Maintain. and stimulating their interest and, everything. and just teasing out lessons that can also help us advance as mm. we move forward. Okay. But the big one is Ghana. Okay. We are coming to Ghana in a big way in August. That's fine. We're going to train teaching staff from seven universities, mm -hmm. University of Ghana, as well as six private and public universities. universities okay. Yes. All right. So then um, any university in Ghana, maybe who will be watching us, is, is free to apply? Yes, yes. They, they are free to, to um, mm. contact um, uh, the University of Ghana. Okay. And our contact person for the University of Ghana is uh, Professor Esther. Sachi Dawson? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, one key thing that I, I wouldn't let you go without asking has to do with the fact that after going through these trainings for, for some few time, do you find out certain critical issues for policy? For example, do you find certain issues in the universities that you think it must go to the highest or the apex body? Maybe to the Association of African Universities, maybe to the Vice Chancellors for some kind of change. Oh yes, mm. um, we have issues that are arising. Um, mm. Let us talk about issues of assessment, for example. Mm. If we mark the exams um, just based on, if we, if we focus too much on exams, paper-based exams, mm -hmm. then we are losing out on capturing the emergence of other skills. Mm. So discussions around how we can also, you know, enhance um, the weight of continuous assessment, assessment. tests, whereby mm. they are not just tests, mm -hmm. but they are outcomes from presentations, class participation. So means focus on other domains of education. Exactly. Mm. So that's one big issue. Okay. Um, another big issue is uh, the whole issue of professionalizing teaching. Mm. We know that, you know, as long as you are a content expert and you have the opportunity, you step into class. That's but all. teaching staff are coming to us and saying. This should have come earlier. Mm. I realized that I really needed to know something about mm. teaching and learning. Mm. And so this, we have started this conversation with the commissions for university education Good. in Kenya, in Uganda, in um, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And they are very much uh, open to ideas of how we can adapt PEDO as a standard for professionalizing teaching and learning at the universities. Great. Yeah. So. Your final word, how, where do you want to see PEDAL? In the next 10 years, if we mention PEDAL, what should we say about PEDAL? We want to see PEDAL as a norm mm. in teaching and learning in each university. And so in the next 10 years, um, I have a vision of mm. this centers of excellence in teaching and learning okay. in each university offering PEDAL on a sustainable basis. Mm. But also, you know, we have um, the pedal postgraduate programs that are being developed. Okay. Yeah, and in a diploma level, at certificate level, mm. and even at master's level. Mm. And so, going forward, I'd like to see these programs accredited, launched, and fully operational. Thank you so much, Dr. Bitis Muganda, for granting this beautiful interview. And then we want to also commend you for the good job that you are doing. We are solidly behind you and want to see the progress of PEDAL each year, each training sessions as well. Always a pleasure co mm. collaborating mm -hmm. with the Association of African Universities. Mm. Let us make this work for Africa. It's possible. Thank you. All right. Viewers, this has been um, the, the, the end session, or let me say that this has been one of the strategic ways of wrapping up the pedagogical leadership training, which began last week and then um, ended just officially yesterday. And we have been speaking with Dr. Beatrice Muganda, who is the Director of Higher Education um, at PASGA, and practically the officer responsible for the pedagogical leadership training that has been going on on the African continent. Keep watching AUTV for wonderful educational stuff. My name is, as always, Nikwe Sam. Thanks for watching. <laughs>